Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting and today we're here on Learn Onyx and we're talking all about touch panels. So the idea basically is that, you know, folks all the time really want to be able to mount to a wall or have available on a touch screen, you know, in a front of house area, a touch panel for control of Onyx typically. Uh, sometimes of other devices like audio and video devices. And in this tutorial, I will show you how to do that. How to remote control Onyx, whether it's on a PC, whether it's on a console, um, does not matter in this case, and do that via a touch panel. The benefits here are, you know, that kind of lay users, you know, people that aren't um, the lighting operator, can fire things on the console. The downside, of course, of having a touch panel system is you do have to leave your Onyx system up 100% of the time. Um, now, if it's one of the consoles, um, basically setting it to auto launch when it boots up um, and leaving the power switch on means your console will always be on and it'll reboot after a power outage, etc. Um, this is so it's it can be super helpful in a lot of situations uh, where consoles are installed, but with the caveat that you do then have to leave your console on all the time. So it's not for everyone. There are definitely times and a lot of times where it makes sense to have a house light panel system um, that would be separate, but it can be super helpful. So let's talk about it. Um, so there's kind of three ways to make a touch panel that controls Onyx. Three pieces of software that I want to explore today. Uh, the first is the built-in Onyx manager. Okay, so the manager software built into Onyx, now built into the consoles, it has been for a while, has these little touch panels that you can create. Um, and you can put different buttons in there and then get to it from an HTML website, basically, where you get that, you export it as an HTML, and you can open it on a web browser. I'll do it now. And you basically get something that looks like this. I believe you can name the buttons and whatnot, um, but it sure isn't pretty. Um, so it's really not my favorite. And so that's where we get into, okay, let's use either OSC or some other protocol to remote control Onyx. So OSC is kind of the simplest, um, being that you can use the Touch OSC app and uh, you can also use the, um, what am I thinking? You can use the, um, uh, a number of any other apps that can control OSC devices to build simple controls. Um, just uh, for, you know, kind of more pre-built stuff, um, one that we really like, if we go to uh, Learn Stage Lighting Gear, is the kiosk from Visual Productions, which of course we don't have on the site, um, but it's about a $1,000. Um, and and uh, we should have it on the site. But but um, it's a great little app that you can run on iOS or you actually buy the device that is a 7-inch PoE touchscreen panel and then you can fire anything in your lighting console and your sound console, etc. Um, kiosk is pretty simple. You basically download this free editor program um, and then you bring in different elements from the side here and then you assign OSC or other messages in the behavior. So you set up an OSC tag. So in this case, I can go to my OSC mapping here. And so I can go ahead and set a playback. Of course, you have to have the OSC licensed, um, but if you're on a console, it is. And so say we just do a fader level. I'm just gonna copy that. And then I would paste that in there. Of course, it's making me type it. So we would type exactly the OSC reference, and then it tells you, hey, it needs to be a float type. Hey, that's playback one, etc. Okay, um, and so those are kind of the basics there. Um, the easiest way to, to figure out like the exact format of the message is to download like the Touch OSC editor, and that's very similar. Um, the visual productions program just allows you to do a little bit more. 
Um, another great app is Control, and both of these actually controlling kiosks allow you to send UDP messages, okay? Now, UDP is really stinking nice because it's just honestly a lot simpler and easier to set up. And all that has to happen is you have to be running Onyx Manager for it to work, okay? Um, so with OSC, you don't have to run Onyx Manager. With UDP, it's literally as simple as just sending something like go QL, so go QList, and then you hit the number. So you literally just copy this little piece. And then you're firing a cue list number, not a fader number, okay? Or a virtual playback button or anything like that. So I love UDP um, in that case because you just go in, um, I close that one, but say I go to Control Designer, and I just grab this button that we use for a trade show. I did clean it up in time for the trade show, but this is an old version. And I can literally just go in here, and if I remember what I'm doing, I can, <laughs> I can go to the protocols here, and I literally just go and set an action to it. So here I've set my playback button one action. And then I go to, 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 to my individual nodes. I find my action for playback button one. And I just put in my protocol there that in this case I was firing video. And then I also fire via OSC or I could fire via UDP. Um, playing that first playback, done. Uh, the cool things about creating a touch panel in control as opposed to something like Touch OSC or Kiosk is that you actually have a timeline. So I can actually set, you know, in this example, my lights to do something for a minute here on my trade show. So it fires the cue list, you know, a cue list kind of starts and it's got like, you know, number of cues firing in order. And when five seconds kicks in, the video starts and I can move that around and it's able to work on a timeline, which is really stinking cool. Uh, it also, it, it's just a lot easier to do kind of timeline based stuff. Okay. So, um, you know, and, and using a program like control is actually really easy in the sense that, you know, you're able to just click and drag your different items all around. You're able to add more. So I want to add items. I can add, you know, faders, right? And I can basically set actions to them that then have different protocols on them. And you can really do a lot of interesting stuff. You can really do a lot of, a lot more powerful things, stacking multiple actions, multiple protocols on one fader. Um, to be able to make easy interfaces for people to use. Um, another way, actually, now that we're just on this rabbit trail, is uh, Companion can, can do similar things as well. So Companion, if you are not familiar, is for the stream decks. You can control them. You can have them do show control type things. So I have a stream deck here that switches the cameras when I'm shooting the live videos. Okay, so we're going way further than I thought we would. And I can send generic OSC. I believe there also might be a module for Onyx. There is. And Onyx, that one, is um, is using Telnet in Onyx Manager. So you'd have to have Onyx Manager um, active for that to work. Or else you can use OSC any other way. Okay. So uh, the basic gist is, you know, when you're in Onyx, you want people to be able to remote control it, whether it be a trade show booth, whether it just be a church where you want someone to be able to turn on the console and then maybe be able to control on a screen, say, you know, a number of different faders that you've customized uh, for, you know, non-technical users to be able to use uh, without really, you know, without possibly messing anything up, hitting buttons that they shouldn't, etc. Um, using touch panels can be a really great option. They're giving you more flexibility than just, you know, a house light button station with like eight presets, but not giving uh, people the full access that um, you don't want them to have because they don't know how to use the console. Um, so I hope you enjoyed looking at these three tools, um, Kiosk from Visual Productions, Control uh, from OnLX, and, uh, you know, also kind of Touch OSC and Companion are kind of tertiary ones there as well. Um, there's a lot of customization and a lot of cool things you can do under the hood to give people control of lights in a venue 
without having full control of the lighting console. So hope that helped. Hope that really brief overview helped you kind of see what's possible so you can start to dive in more, think about your use case, think about what you're trying to do specifically, and then you can dive into it yourself and start getting into it. If that sounds good, give us a big thumbs up. Let us know if you like this video. And hey, if you love Onyx, be sure to subscribe here. And if you need any Onyx gear, grab it at LearnStageLightingGear.com. We'll see you guys there. Thanks.